Today's show brought to you in part by GoToMeeting. For a free 30-day trial, use code podcast at gotomeeting.com. Hey, everyone. It is Wednesday, April 4th, and I'm not going to lie. We've got a really great episode, but just so you know, it's National Tell a Lie Day. It is, like I said, April 4th, Wednesday. We're joined by Jonathan Baroche of Rome's. This is RVN Live, brought to you in part by GoToMeeting and Pet Hub. Hey everyone, it's Courtney Wallen here at RVNN Live. How do you like them apples? That's our uh, new open. It's a little Anchorman-ish in spirit of Anchorman 2, which I have no no money backing me to promote that. Uh, anyways, this is RVNN Live, like I said, Wednesday, April 4th. Some of you may be a little tired. Last night was the Women's National Championship. Unfortunately, it's a little quiet, a little sad around uh, the area where we are because uh, Notre Dame was defeated by Baylor last night. So uh, a little tear there, one of our uh, hometown teams. And if you are rooting for Baylor, congratulations. If not, uh, you're like us, a little down today. Uh, but not to fear, we're going to pick you right back up. We've got uh, Jonathan Baroche of Rome. He's a CEO and founder. You're going to find out more in this interview. He joined us from Sydney last night. Uh, so we had to pre-record this because the time zones are a little, little different. And uh, just a really great guy, really great interview but we've got lots in store after the interview so stick around i'll have a few more things to share with you but for right now i'll just go ahead and uh roll the clip enjoy like we said we are going to be joined right now by jonathan baroche how'd i do uh, 90%. Jonathan Baroche. That was pretty good. Okay. <laughs> I tried my very, very hardest not to butcher it too badly. Of course, Jonathan is the CEO and founder of Roams, a great app that we found out about at CES 2012 this year. We are so excited to have you on today's show. Thank you so much for joining us. You're all the way in Australia. We've already asked, how's Wednesday? Oh, uh, look, thanks for having me. It's, Wednesday is an awesome day. You're going to have sunshine and blue skies no matter where you are. Great. And uh, I couldn't be more excited about that. We had a pretty nice day today, I, I think. Andy, was it was it <laughs> was it nice today? <laughs> it, it it was nice, a little bit a little bit cool, but uh, we, you know, consider it's very early part of April. It's uh, not as bad as it could be. Not as bad as it could be. All right. Well, Jonathan, we of course have uh, plenty of questions for you, and I want to bring up the website uh, real quickly. Of course, if you're not familiar, we we've actually featured Rome's as uh, one of our travel apps of the day. Great app. Uh, I love the social goggles. I love that little term there, social goggles. And you guys are going to give them through this app. Uh, I want to hear it from the horse's mouth because Jonathan I, I featured this on travel app of the day I did a mediocre job I think you can explain it <laughs> a lot better <laughs> that's not fair you did a great job but I suppose our vision is that no matter where you are you should be able to find out what's going on around you or what's interesting um, and there's so many social networks and there's so much content to consume it's really confusing for a normal user so, you know, there's Facebook and there's Foursquare and there's Instagram and there's Google Plus and there's Pinterest and every day it seems like there's another social network. So what Roams tries to do is, says, look, you don't have to open a million different apps. You know, you can open up Roams and you get a really nice sense of what people are talking about nearby. So like in the travel context, you know, you might have just arrived in a new city and we start showing you things that you're interested in, the local cafe where you can get a great coffee, you know, the great the pizza joint. Maybe there's a, a festival or a music gig going on down in the park. Um, all these things that, you know, it would be really hard to find out about, particularly when you're not in an area that you know very well, we kind of intelligently pull it together so that you can fire up the app. It's free from the app store. Um, and you can just use roams to sort of roam your world, I suppose. Absolutely. And is this just available for iOS devices? Can you get this on Android? Are you looking, if you're not, are you looking to move to that platform? I think we may have lost him. Look ago. at the moment, oh, it's oh, a free app for iPhone, so you can download it from the app store. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Sorry, you cut out for just a second. Go ahead. I just saw the, the guy from our commercial stripping yeah, I know his when you lost me. <laughs> That was a bad part. <laughs> that was a bad part to switch to, but it, it's it's a good little commercial there. So, uh, free download for iOS. Can you repeat that one more time? It's a free. It's a free download for iOS. 
Um, but yeah, obviously there are other platforms that are really interesting for us. Great. And um, there, there's been a great article uh, released on Mashable uh, talking about the app and, and 2.0 is out now. And, and Andy, what kind of questions do you have well, for him? Well, I, I understand that uh, you've had a lot of response from people who've downloaded the app and uh, that people are not shy about suggesting enhancements. So, so what do you do when you have hundreds of suggestions coming in? How do you sort through them to determine which ones to implement and uh, which ones to maybe put aside for another day? I think that's a really cool thing about um, technology and around social media that people aren't backwards in coming forwards. People, you know, let you know about things that are great, and they also let you know about things that um, they don't really like. So. That immediacy of feedback is so valuable. Um, you know, typically in the past you'd have to rely on a survey or somebody filling out a form to find out whether they like what you're doing. Um, so you, look, we look at everything. We read every email. We respond to everything. Um, you know, we're like any other typical technology company. We've got limited resources, limited people, limited pe hours in the day. So you. You try and sort of get the easy wins out first. Um, we had a lot of requests as an example for photo editing and, you know, filters. Instagram has been hugely popular and people wanted to take photos and be able to edit those photos when they're out and about. So when they discovered, you know, cool things, they wanted to be able to edit the photo. So for us, it was a really easy decision to implement Camera Plus. So, you know, the release we just did last week um, had an integration with Camera Plus so that you can edit your photos on Roams. You had talked about uh, the, the idea that uh, you, you have a particular uh, notion uh, in mind of how people are going to use the product, but uh, it seems like people always surprise you. Uh, what are some of the use cases that have floated up that uh, maybe you didn't anticipate in your uh, meetings uh, around the whiteboard? Look, our, our idea for Roams has always been uh, as an application or a piece of technology that connects people with sort of what's going on around them. So, you know, taking a, a digital technology environment and bringing them, bring that to the real world. Um, how we do that, I suppose, is, is, you know, what devices we're using and what the product looks like. Um, we expected, you know, people would be using the phone out and about, they'd find something, um, they'd engage with it and they'd click. We may have lost him there just for a second. I know he'll come back up. The feed's been pretty, the, the Skype has been pretty good as far He's as well, there he is. And maybe they're driving something. <laughs> you may have to repeat that again. Sorry, you dropped again. And I know we've got a connection from Australia, so you'll have to bear with us here. Um, can you repeat that last part just one more time? Yeah, I was just saying, I mean, the, the thing that surprised me is, you know, people are changing their location on the app on Rome. So they're saying, you know, now I'm in, in Austin when they're sitting in L.A., because they just want to see what's going on over in Austin. So that wasn't kind of expected that people are using it almost as like a browsing tool to mm -hmm. get a sense of what another, what's happening in another place. Um, so, you know, for, in, in terms of travel, you know, you're about to go on a road trip and you want to check out the place that you're heading to. Um, you know, you can change your location on Rome's and see what the local buzz is there. And we, we didn't expect that. We thought people would always pull it out of their pocket just to see what was happening in their immediate area. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of spurred us to think a little bit more broadly in our vision. You know, if we can be a platform that people discover and share location-based content, no matter where they are, that's really powerful. So, you know, if I want to show you a, a great coffee in L.A. that I had so that next time you're in L.A. you can try it, um, Rome's could be the tool to enable you to sort of do that and share that content. I love it. I think one of the biggest things that attracted me at CES is, I think the first example that you gave me was just a simple example, probably the first whiteboard, is is you were at Disney World, I think, with your son, and you're yeah. kind of, you were able to bring up all these different social networks just to see you know, what other people's experience was like, and our conversation was, I don't want to be friends with people I don't know on Facebook. I don't want to be following people on Instagram. No offense, but if I don't know people, and I think a lot of people are like that, I'm not just going to follow anyone and nor do I want anyone just following me. However, Rome's give you the, gives you the ability to only get what you want. I mean, only see what you want from those social networks from Foursquare, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. So wherever you're at, it just pulls all that social information. It's fantastic. So, you know, we've got our RVers out there that they 
they want to pretend like locals. And I don't know how much you can pretend with a huge RV. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a giveaway. But you want to know what the locals are doing. And that's the whole experience of really getting into those destinations and those locations and experiencing that, that best cup of joe or whatever it may be that that city's known for. And you don't know that until you, you look on things like this. So, Jonathan, my question to you would be, you know, there's a lot of apps out there that do similar things. And as, you know, on Travel App of the Day, some of them are starting to run together. And because we have you here, what sets Roams apart from any other, you know, social networking destination kind of app? Well, I'll give you, I think I'll go back to the example that you raised about Disneyland. Like, I, I arrived at Disneyland. I didn't have any friends there. Um, I hadn't been for 10 years. But I wanted to know, like, where to go, which rides to go on first, where I should eat in the park, you know, even where Mickey Mouse was. And, and there's not very many apps that can deliver that. And I opened up Rome's and I could see, you know, Mickey just arrived at the front gate so I could take my son over, you know, to meet him. I saw that, you know, there was... Uh, a, a Texas barbecue in the park that was serving ribs and I love American spare ribs so you know, I went and had that for lunch mm. there's not many apps that are very intelligent that kind of look through all of the content and just show the stuff that is relevant and it's also happening now there's not very many that look across a whole bunch of different networks um, and there's very few that do it in real time. So as you know, as we see fresh content, we can actually show that to you. So as an example, at South by Southwest last month, at some of the parties I was opening up rooms and I was seeing what was happening throughout the whole venue because people on the other side of the room were using rooms, on the other side they were using Instagram, upstairs they, they were using Foursquare. And I was getting a sense of what people were talking about and what was happening at the party. Um, and that's pretty cool. And there's very few applications or technologies that can do that. And we kind of really nailed it um, at South by Southwest because it was showing, you know, we can deliver on that, that promise of really fresh, interesting content. Very good. You cut out just a little bit at the beginning, and, and what he was saying is just the intelligent uh, resources from all those social media sites. So the, I think the message definitely came across. Andy, do you have any other questions? Well, yeah, a question I would have uh, in trying to determine which network might give you more relevant information. Uh, for example, is, is there any way to have, uh, let us say, uh, age filtering on Facebook information mm. so that um, uh, if, if you are a, a, a grandparent that's there and you're interested maybe in grandparent activities or in kids' activities, but not so much the, the bar and social scene sorts of things, uh, is that something that you uh, get to kind of, it all washes in and you kind of sort it out yourself or are there some filters in the works? No, there's, there's already filters in the application. So you can say, for example, you know, I'm not interested in nightlife, mm -hmm. but I've got children and then see appropriate um, places and content. So that's already in there. And the intelligence also in your behavior. So obviously if you keep on looking at um, clothing stores, but you never look at um, nightclubs or, or bars, then we should stop showing you nightclubs and bars. So I suppose there's two ways. Firstly, explicitly telling us, so changing the settings, but also through your behavior and the places that you like and the content that you share, we learn a little bit more about you. So we get better at better at showing you what's going on around you. But we have to be careful. Like, you know, if a 20-year-old takes a photo of an amazing clam chowder, does that mean that a 70-year-old isn't going to enjoy that same cl clam yeah. chowder? Yeah. So we have to be really careful about what we, what we block out um, based on, you know, personalization. We don't want to be so personal that, you know, there's, there's nothing that we get to show you because, you know, there's nothing that's 100% relevant. So yeah. it's, it's a balancing act and we're still getting it right, but um, I, I think we're sort of heading down the right path. Well, the, the reason that I ask was just this past weekend, uh, you know, we're a city of about uh, 45,000 in, in, a, in a metro area of quarter of a million, but I went down to Indianapolis, a much larger city, and uh, just trying to get some feel for, uh, for how the app, app would work. And, and I guess I hadn't used it enough for it to, de to determine my, my use pattern. So that, that's an encouraging thing to know. Yeah, and if you just jump into settings, under settings um, and you go to your interests, you can turn your interests on and off. So potentially, you know, you can turn some of the ones that aren't appropriate for you off and that, that should help filter some of the content as well. 
Um, but then, yeah, sure, the more you use it, the more um, venues that you like um, and the content that you add, um, it gets smarter about some of the stuff that it shows you. That's fantastic. I know we are we are believers in this app. We enjoy it. Uh, we hope that our viewers will understand how cool this is and uh, how it can help you in your RVing adventures and really kind of um, camouflage the huge motorhome that you're driving and make you appear <laughs> that you are a local through. Wait, can you, can you do this? The social goggles? Can this? Can you guys do this? Is that a good social goggle? No? Uh, that's no. that's an approach, Courtney. <laughs> I, I have it works for you. Great marketing, um, great marketing picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm available. Yeah, there, wait, wait, do it again. He did it. There you go. You got it. There you go. <laughs> I, I, I prefer to sort of hold the iPhone yeah. up and use use phone. <laughs> That's it's probably a, a more uh, professional approach. Um, so I, I had to try it, though. Uh, Jonathan, thank you so much uh, for joining us from Australia. Uh, one last uh, thing we want you to let the viewers know how they can download the app, where your website is, where you are social media-wise, and how they can get in touch. Sure. I mean, our, our website is www.roams.com. Um, we're free on the App Store. So for iPhone, if you open up the App Store and you search for Roams, you can download the app, and if you like it, please don't forget to rate it in the App Store so other people find out about it. And you can follow us on Twitter, and the, the tag is at Roams, R-O-A-M-Z. And let us know what you think. We'd love you to download it, play with it. It's free. Um, and email us your thoughts, and if we can make it better for everybody, we'd be thrilled. Yeah. Well, people should go to your blog uh, at uh, blog.roams.com just solely for the photographs and uh, things that uh, people have sent along to you. Some uh, some fantastic travel photographs there. It's been amazing from some of the canyons in the U.S. to you know we've had um, places in the Middle East to Asia to Europe from all over the world. Content's flowing in. And it's incredible. And you asked me earlier what the thing that surprised me the most. The thing that surprised me the most is the places that people are using it. Just this morning, somebody in Curaçao in the Car Car Caribbean took a photo you know, of their coffee at, at the McDonald's. <laughs> I never in a million years thought we would have a user in Curaçao, but today I can say you know, we, we've got our first user there. So you know, it was a happy day. It, it, indeed. Well, we wish you uh, the best of, uh, of a happy Wednesday there as we uh, finish up our uh, Tuesday and uh, look forward to having, having you back here in a couple of uh, months and we'll uh, see what happens towards the end of the summer. Thanks, Emma. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Jonathan. All right. Social goggles. There they are. Um, maybe not so professional, but you know, it's fun. So uh, we hope you enjoyed that interview with Jonathan of Rome's. You know, that is such, such a great um, app. I love it so much. And we know that you will as well. So we just want to say a big thanks to Jonathan for joining us all the way over in Sydney. And, uh, you know, early in the morning last night for him and uh, late in the evening for us. But it was it was well worth it. So, you know, I have to explain myself because I, I watch some of these episodes from time to time. And I notice, you know what, my eye contact isn't the greatest. And there's a reason for that. And I want to explain that real quick is that I'm switching as I'm hosting and I'm looking down sometimes. So I feel bad because I like to make eye contact when I talk and I'm noticing that I'm looking down a lot because I've got stuff going on. So I'm practicing my blind switching and things like that. But you know what, if you just bear with me, I hopefully will get better. So as I'm looking for something here, not making eye contact with you, not on purpose, uh, that's what's happening. So anywho, uh, back to the show again, uh, check it out, Rome's. And you know what, you probably noticed during that interview, uh, Skype had some issues uh, just from the connectivity from uh, Sydney, but I, it kept going black because I tried to switch to their website last night and my uh, computer decided to just completely drop off the face of the planet. And so that's what I was trying to show you. So if you go to roams.com, you can check them out again at Roams on Twitter. They're on Facebook, all kinds of good stuff. So I love, I love, I love Roams. Check it out. All right, we got lots of great stuff in store. My 30-second rundown, of course, I, I can't skip it because it's just part of what we do here, right? Right, okay, so uh, just a reminder, we are now on Boxy, super excited about this, so check us out in the uh, App Store, rvnn.tv. Of course, we have the RVNN Daily, not so daily, comes out every Friday, lots of uh, social media people contributing to this, lots of great articles in the area of RV, RVing, uh, travel, road trips, all that great stuff. We are now on Pinterest. Every single one of our shows has boards. Now, this, this picture was taken back in the early days. They are uh, much more uh, decorated at this point in time. I will have to take a new picture. Of course, we're now on Google Plus. We've always been on Facebook and Twitter. And 
We're, of course, on the Roku. Very excited about this. We are actually in the travel section um, if you have the Roku. And you know what? Believe it or not, check this out. This girl got her Roku this week. Uh, thanks to uh, Amazon deal of the day, I got the uh, Roku 2, the uh, 1080p HD with Angry Birds for about $20 less than what it is already at, which... Let's be honest, the most expensive Roku is like $99. That's it. And uh, you don't have to pay any more than that. It's just $99. And if you have Netflix and all that stuff, you can connect it to that. And, of course, you can watch some great uh, other stuff, including RBNN. So uh, if you have uh, watched us on there, uh, be sure to give us a rating. We really, really appreciate that. Love feedback from you. All right, so just want to give you a quick rundown before I wrap up today's show. Um, in addition to today's live, we are going to be publishing a lot of things. Uh, one of those being, let's see if I can get this up here. Uh, we've got a great uh, interview that's uh, right now featured on rvbusiness.com. Of course, our content providers at RV Business Magazine. Uh, we've got an interview with uh, Fleetwood CEO John Draheim that's going to be coming up. So be sure to check that out. Um, we recorded that about a week ago. So that'll be up on uh on rvnn.tv, not up on the Roku yet, so that's where you will have to view that. Uh, we've got an episode of Tales from the Road. Tales from the Road is our uh, vet show where Dr. Jill Windy joins us and talks about how to take care of your pet on the road. And uh, this week's episode is going to be about feline heartworm. Last week we discussed canine heartworm, uh, feline heartworm. I am a crazy cat lady, so this was interesting for me because I am a new owner of cats. I uh, also will be... Uh, publishing an episode of what's wrong with this picture. This is our episode on general storage. Now, as you're traveling, there's you want to back up. You want to back up your stuff, not once, but twice, maybe three times. And we're going to talk generally where you want to put those things. So you want to keep those vacation photos uh, nice and in a safe place. So uh, we'll be talking about that on what's wrong with this picture. So be looking for that. Of course, episodes of Trending RV, Travel App of the Day, and Consumer News RV will also be up. Those are all now on the Roku. So check it out. We will have a Monday's episode and today's episode probably up by Thursday or Friday. Uh, what's recording this week? Man, we are stinking busy this week. I love it, but it is so much fun. Uh, we've got a brand new show coming to RVNN. So excited to have uh, Sylvia Tarnazer of RVHealthy.com. Check it out, RVHealthy.com here. She has been a certified wellness coach, and now she's joining our team to talk to you about adding years to your RV lifestyle. So uh, not just uh making a few changes, but making lifestyle changes that are going to extend your, your time on the road. Uh, tomorrow we'll also be joined uh, by the new president of the RVMH Hall of Fame. If you have not been to this museum, it's in Elkhart, Indiana. Check it out. Ma you know, put it on your uh, family vacation. It is fun. It is really a neat place. To check out the history. So uh, right here in Elkhart, the RV capital of the world. Uh, Daryl Sear Searer will be joining us, of course, with uh, Sherman Goldenberg of RV Business Magazine and another new show. Can you believe it? Did I say we're busy? We're busy. Uh, we've got a brand new show coming out called State of Wonder. And we're going to be talking with Oregon. Actually, I'm going to be talking to the state itself. Um, if you are a fan of Oregon or want to go there someday or soon, uh, you'll want to watch this episode because we are going to be pointing out the top places to check out in Oregon. And uh, you're going to be hearing it right from the horse's mouth. That's just a term we're going to be using today. And uh, if you are following me on Twitter or Google+, Plus, you'll know that I'm a fan of the show Portlandia. So I'm actually really, I'm excited about all of our shows. I'm excited about to learn more about Oregon because I haven't been there, but I'm obsessed with the city Portland. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, we'll be talking more about that, but uh, I, I declared today National uh, Put a Bird on It Day. So if you're following me in those any of those areas, uh, check that out and you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, let's see. I think that's about it, except for uh, Friday, we will be recording, of course, RVNN Live, uh, Trending RV, Travel App of the Day, and Consumer News RV, all at 12 p.m. and streaming until 4 p.m. Eastern. So a busy week, lots in store. We appreciate everyone joining us and uh, your dedication to RVNN. And we've had so much uh, great feedback from all of you uh, telling us, you know, when's this going to be on? When's this going to be on? What are you doing this time? You know, just you're just excited. And, and we really, really, really appreciate that. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts to you, if that makes any sense. So I'll wrap it up. Again, it's National Tell-A-Lie Day. You know what? It's hard to tell lies. I'm bad at telling lies. If you're good at it, 
uh, today's your day. Uh, but uh, hope you have a good one. We'll be back on Friday. So uh, we'll see you all then. Thanks for joining us again. This is RVNN Live on RVNN.TV. Hey, Gabe, want to go for a walk? Gabe? 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 But are you lost? Hold on. If your pet is the adventuresome type, be sure he's connected to Pet Hub. A quick scan using any smartphone shares your pet's vital information so that even his wildest escapades have a happy ending. Pet Hub, reuniting pets with their families. Come on, Gabe, let's go home. <laughs>